Today we'll make a glowing snowflake swag. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with some deco mesh. We're going to be using a little brush and some white chalk paint. I have a little sign here that matches the colors I'll be using. I have a snowflake. You can pretty much get these anywhere this time of year. And I have some little wood ornaments that we're going to be painting. I think one came from a craft store and the other one came from Dollar Tree. And then two Dollar Tree white Christmas trees. I'm repurposing those from a swag last year. Some zip ties. And some frosted looking picks. They actually look like they have bits of snow on them or ice okay so you can do your swag either way but for this purpose I'm gonna use like a I think you would call it a teardrop shape so we're just gonna kind of overlap these to make it a little bit longer a little bit thicker but we're gonna leave one the one it's gonna be a couple inches taller than the other one so you're just going to put one several inches down lower and then connect them with the tie right around that inner piece. And then fluff these pieces out and I'm going to get these out of the way so I can put one more tie in there. If you don't, it's going to move around because you can see, see there when I pull them to fluff them out, they just keep trying to move away from each other. So fluff all the pieces out to the sides. We're going to be using these for our deco mesh to hold them in place. Alright, so I think this is a good spot for another tie close to the bottom. But in a place that of course will be hidden when we put every everything that we have on top of it. And then I'll just use my cutters here and just trim off those extra pieces in. Throw those in the trash. I know one thing for sure when you're working with this type of stuff it tends to grab on everything these and deco mesh and these little branches um, they just catch on to everything like velcro and they go all over the place you move one piece and everything's moving so you just want to make sure that these are all pulled out straight pine branches are straight so let's pull these all out straight and this will also help us when we're getting ready to place down our deco mesh bundles. We can see exactly where we need to put them. And then the tip ends a little bit longer. We're going to be putting something down there later. If you would like to show me some love, it's not required, but always appreciated. You can find the link to buy me a coffee in the description box below. Okay, so I went and added some of this white mesh. And it has like a silver running through it we're going to take our gray mesh first and this is shorter a shorter mesh than the other i think this is eight inches and the white one is 10 inches i believe but you just need two different sizes to get this effect so i'm going to be using to start the bundle two gray and then two white and i'm just cutting that frayed edge off to give me a nice clean edge go up to the 10 and then just cut that off and then this is what the bundles will look like when they're done pretty much be sure you got some clips that you can hold your little bundles together and I'll show you how we're gonna put those together you're gonna take the gray roll it over about three times clamp it off go to the other side roll it over a couple of times and then walk the center in these are called cruffles the rolled edges are going to be under, just the way I like to do it. I know some people put the rolled part on top. You can do it whichever way you like best. Then we're going to go next to the white piece. Same process here. Roll it under. That catches all those loose ends so you don't have any frayed bits sticking out of your pretty little bundle. And we're just going to scoot them up close side by side and clamp them together. There will be a gray, a white, and then another gray same process folding over walking them together okay and you know here you can just see i easily flip it over 
and add it to the bundle. And this keeps everything with the rolled edges on the underside. And that's how I like mine. And they look like this. Really cute. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Alright, so we're going to start cutting down the picks. I'm going to cut off these pieces. See, it looks like little ice or something on there. In the south, we call that sleet. It's like a mix of snowy rain. I'm going to cut that off, and then I'm looking for the pieces on my pick that have the most of those little icy pieces on them, because we're going to use those pieces. Alright, now we're going to start at the top. There's no rhyme or reason to this pattern. I just know that since it's a teardrop shape, I want the biggest, widest part of this on the top. So you can see I just placed it down and twisted the branches around it. Gonna go up here, down just a tad, but beside it, right across from it. I'm trying to decide here. Okay, so I'm gonna take that little stack, place it down inside of there and then hold it tightly and twist the branches around just a little bit it's gonna hold it in place so this is gonna be the widest part of the swag that's gonna be the top it has the longest branches and it's gonna have the widest deco mesh bundle parts so now we're just gonna start angling downward and go back and forth now we have five bundles with two gray and one white so you're going to need to have 10 gray pieces cut and you're going to need five white pieces cut to make each of those bundles i like to do mine ahead of time so then the assembly is a lot quicker so you see i went to the right and now i'm going down into the left twist it around just like that And I decided not to add any additional ribbon on this wreath. I, well, on the swag, I didn't think that it was necessary for the look that I was going for. And I do know a lot of people just don't care about the bows. They just are not big bow people. So, you know, this may be just the thing for you. Plus, the snowflake is going to light up, y'all. Come on, does it get any better than that? Okay, so you can see here, I tried to get the widest part on the top there, and then it goes a little bit lower down, and you can accomplish that look just by moving around your pieces of deco mesh and your, your branches just a little bit. Look at here. Look who's making an appearance. <gasps> the Grinch. Yes. You're going to be seeing the Grinch and his progress throughout this video. My daughter was helping. She was doing her own thing in the basement, her and my son, while I was doing my crafting. They're little crafters, too. Okay, so now I'm going to use about eight inches here of this jute cord so that I can put a hanger on the back. It's really tight between those two. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm pulling it down and then adding some glue right under it next to that metal piece. And then I'm just tying a little knot here so that we have a loop in the end so that it can be hung just like that. Okay. Now, here is a cork light set, but you can get any type of little really thin line lights like this at Dollar Tree or pretty much anywhere. Okay, here's the Grinch before he had his makeover. This is how he looked originally. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the hanker out of my snowflake because I don't need it. I'm going to add some spackle in there. <gasps> the Grinch is back. All right, and then I'm just going to go around. After my spackle is dry, I'm going to just go around and figure out how I want this wire to be attached. And you can see you can bend it. I wanted to make sure I had enough. So I just bend it around, use a little bit of tape to make sure that it was going to fit nicely on my snowflake. Then I'm going to add dots of glue and just use a little stick. It's like a coffee stir or something. I had a big pack from the thrift store. Um, and I like to use it for these types of projects just to hold things in place and to keep me from burning my fingers. This is on my cool temperature on my glue gun. Now to attach the little 
light switch on the back. I'm going to use some of this double stick. I don't know what. This is tape. It came from Dollar Tree, but I lost the packaging, so I'm not sure what it's called. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay, so now we're going to move on to painting the rest of our snowflakes. These are the bigger ones, and all of these snowflakes look different. And I like that because no two snowflakes are alike. Did you know that? It's true. They're like fingerprints. They're different. So, I'm going to take all the hangers off of the ones that were in that pack. I think you can get something similar to this at Walmart. Um, I'm pretty sure you can. But I'm going to use this white, and, then, and I'm kind of using a light hand here, and I'm doing sort of a dry brush technique. I don't want the wood to be completely covered up because my little inspiration piece, which is the big snowflake that goes in the middle, it has some distressing and some some of the same look as what we're doing here on this snowflake. And I just really wanted everything to be cohesive and look similar. So I'll show you how that other snowflake looks. And you can see that they look better like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing with each of the snowflakes so that they can all be drying at the same time. This chalk paint is convenient. It dries super fast. There's the Grinch with his hat on. Oh, he needs a little bit of hot glue to fix him, but she's going to work on that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so now we need to put that snowflake on the tree. So I'm going to use a pipe cleaner. I'm just going to peel up the little section here because that tape is repositionable. You can move it around. It's sticky, kind of thick, like those little slappy hands that kids like to play with. That's what the texture reminds me of. I'm going to put some hot glue down on that full-size pipe cleaner, and then I'm going to press my light switch back on there. And just hold it for a minute so that my glue will dry underneath and everything will stay together and not fall off because I'm going to be manipulating the snowflake to get it in this wreath and I don't want anything falling apart. So I'm just going through, trying to find a spot that is empty between my deco mesh. I don't want to squish any of my bundles down and distort the shape of my little swag. So rather than wrapping it around the center, I'm just going to go and wrap it around the little branches. This is going to give me an opening to be able to put my hand in there to turn the switch on and off. Because that's the important part, right? We need to be able to turn it on and off. Alrighty. So here are our snowflakes, and they are all dry now. I'm going to take these picks, and I just decided to cut them down shorter. Um, the bottom part of the pick, for some reason, didn't have much on it. I guess that's the way it is when it snows and sleets anyway, doesn't it? The top of the part is what gets the snow. But since we're doing this and we got snowflakes everywhere, I wanted to put lots of sparkly pieces around. So that's what I'm doing. I just cut them down smaller and I'm just going to be adding these throughout wherever they look good. I'm not worried about perfect symmetry here. Just want to get it where it feels right, where it looks right. How many of you actually craft that way? Do you, do you go by how you feel or do you try to go by rules that other people give you? Because I'll tell you right now, if I went by all the rules that other people give me in crafting, I don't think I would have got as far as I have gotten. And I appreciate that uniqueness. It's God-given. And all of us have the ability to do something unique. And we should do that. Because that's the stuff that brings us the joy, you know. Brings us happiness. Gives us a smile when we see it in our home. When we come home and it's hanging on our door. It gives us that smile and that welcome home that we all appreciate and enjoy. All right, so I'm gonna start off with my biggest snowflakes and I'm gonna put those in there first. I'm just gonna place them here and there. I wanna be sure that they are touching something when I put the glue in there. You know, just poke it in there, expect it to stay. You need to have it pressed against uh, some type of framework underneath or another ornament or the picks, you know, so that nothing falls out. I don't want my 
projects that I work so long and hard on to just, you know, fall apart. I want them to last a while. So you're going to see me just taking the different ones and just placing them here and there. And you can actually give it a little dimension by gluing it right to the back of that star that's already there. You can see here. Just sandwich it between the deco mesh and the bottom of that snowflake. And honestly, if you don't have lights, which I feel like you can find them anywhere right now, especially during holiday time, but if you don't have lights, you don't even have to put them on your swag. This, to me, is gorgeous as it is. It's just really not necessary, but it honestly is the icing on the cake. It gives such a warm and pretty glow. And you see how nice it looks with a variety of sizes and shapes. I just love it. Okay, so here are the little pieces that look like um, all the leaves have fallen off. And, and this is what's left in the wintertime. These little sticks. And they have the same little ice on them, so they need to be added. This is going to give it a little more of a rustic look, which you know I'm all about that rustic life. And it's going to give it a little more size. It's going to make it a little wider, and I like that. Plus, it's like a flyaway, you know? Gives you a little more interest. And I think, honestly, it really brings the piece together, having these additional pieces in here. And they all came off the same pick. There were pine cones as well, but I didn't feel like the pine cones were appropriate for this. It would have just overwhelmed it and taken away probably from the snowflakes, and I didn't want that to happen. They need their moment. So you can see, you're just tucking them here and there. And they're very lightweight, so they'll stick to that mesh and not pull anything down. You can do this with the little pitberry vines that you get at Dollar Tree or any other type of greenery. You know, you could, instead of doing the little sticks, you could use other frosted greenery that you like. Um, the little frosted eucalyptus is really pretty and you can get that from Dollar Tree. You can use berries instead in these places, whatever you want to use. But I really wanted to focus on, you know, the white and silver. I did a a video uh, recently with a lot of gray and white and it, I just loved it and when I thought about this snowflake and I knew I wanted to make a swag I thought these would be beautiful together really accent each other so I'm just continuing to go around and you know it's not important that they're the same size nature generally doesn't do things like that so I'm just kind of following that rule just put them here and there, just like God does it, you know, here and there. Okay, so you remember the long piece at the tip of the tree? We're going to use it to hang the sign. And look when we turn the lights on. <gasps> oh my goodness, the magic. I love this. You could take more lights if you wanted to and go all the way through your swag. But this brings a lot of attention to that middle piece, and I like that. So here we are. And I've went ahead and done two different backdrops for you for this swag, just so you can see the difference. It mixes well with any other color scheme, pretty much, because it's white and silver and, you know. But also, I've put it on a different backdrop so that you could see that it looks really good with gray if you want to do some type of a neutral look. See, this is a more warm backdrop. It's more woody and natural colored. Look how pretty. Oh, I love this. And then here it is with the gray, so you can see how nice it looks with that as well. You can still see some of the wood tones in the snowflakes, which I think makes it a little more versatile as far as um, color schemes in your house and whether or not you want to do it. And you could use a different color sign on the bottom other than Peace on Earth and the gray and white like I did. You could use something different there. Or you don't have to do anything at all on the bottom if you don't want to. I hope you try this 
this beautiful little swag. I hope it brought you some joy watching it light up today. It sure did for me. If you have not subscribed already, I would love, love, love to have you in our little YouTube family. Thank you so much for dropping by, and I hope to see you again very, very soon. Bye.